Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Ravenport. I'm just bringing my plow down over this way. I'm going to finish up this a little bit. Help G has now completed their task, so that field is done. Well, I say done, it's, it's partially done. This is not going to have been completely done just yet. There will be a little bit that we're going to have to tidy up. Then once we've done that, we can um, bring that planter over here and start doing the bits over here. There's a few new mods this week. I see we have a few new mods. One mod in particular is going to change the face of our Super Hardcore series. And it's going to change it for the better, I think. There's actually two mods that are both going to make a significant difference. I think that some people might not be entirely thrilled about it, uh, the, the changes that are going to happen, but I think a lot of people are going to be pleased about it because of um, progress has been rather slow on that series lately, hasn't it? It's, it's, it's been too slow. Uh, so I know that we need to kind of speed things along a little bit. It's very rough right there, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that. That's not what we want. We don't want that. I might have to re... You know what? I think I am. I think I'm going to have to redo that bit. Let me just do one more line with the plow a minute. Uh, let's not flip the plow over. Let's just do one more line up through here. And then we will take a look. Um, because, yeah, you, you look at that. The way that's... Whoa. Yeah, see what I mean? We got, we, we, we got some serious rough ground going on there that... We don't really want. So if, if I bring you to there a minute and I'll lift you up. We're going to here and we're going to here and we're going to here like this. And then we have to bring that in like that and middle mouse button. Now, obviously we do want to level that out. I don't like that I'm now removing a load of those shrubs, which I didn't want to do. Um, I believe that being able to put your shrubs back is one of the things that's being released in um, uh, 1.3, the patch 1.3. I believe this is the case. I might be wrong. I might be wrong on that. Uh, it might just be that there's a mod that somebody's released that will do it. Um, I know there is a mod that somebody's released that will do it, but I think that there is also a, um, a, a part of the landscaping patch is going to be adding that feature in as well, or it it might just be grass. I don't know about shrubs. It'd be really cool if they did, though, because I like plowing in the shrubs. That that gives it a really good sort of feel. When when you're busy working on the field, the ability to plow those shrubs back in, it I, it makes it feel a bit more realistic. When, when, you, when you're creating a fresh field like this, I've only ever done this once, created a new field from scrubland and... There was a lot of shrubs and stuff that had to be ploughed in. I mean, we didn't actually use a plough to do it, uh, or at least not to start with. We used a springtime cultivator for most of it, and we went over it and over it and over it with a springtime cultivator, and then eventually, um, when we'd sort of broken up the surface quite a bit, then we went in through with a plough and uh, just did a couple passes with that. One. Well, not a couple. We, we just went over the field with that, and then... Uh, seeded it we didn't use a uh, cedar we were planting it with grass so we just threw grass seed and fertilizer mixed together in a fertilizer spinner and just drove up and down and then went over it with the springtime again and job done there it is we, we had our brand new field a few weeds came up but you know once you go over it with the mower a couple of times and weeds generally kind of die down and the grass takes over and it was all pretty good and that approach tends to work fairly well with a, you know, a sort of small farm, with grass anyway. Um, don't worry about, you know, you tended not to worry too much about the weeds. And then the grass tends to choke out most of the weeds. Go over it a few times with a mower. And most of the other weed, the, the weeds don't tend to hang on very well once you start getting over it with a mower a few times. And it made life a lot easier. Now, it's going to be a little bit slow today because we've got to plough up this field and there's no sort of quick way to do this unless we go and get a bigger plough, which means we'd have to go and get a bigger tractor as well, which is actually 
One of the things that I would like to do very soon, I do want a bigger tractor on our farm. We're looking at some serious expansion, and I'd like a bigger tractor. Now, I know we've been leasing quite a bit of stuff, and we're going to lease more stuff. In particular, we're going to be leasing this bad boy over here, uh, which, uh, there we go, there we go. Look at that, the Class Quadrant 5300. I didn't even know they'd got up to a 5300. The Quadrant that I used to use a lot was the Class Quadrant 1200, okay? You can, that'll tell you how many years ago that was. This thing, look, this is a monster, this is. Absolute beast. Look at it. Genuine beast right there. Looks fantastic. That does 12 miles an hour. How much does a standard baler do? Uh, 12 miles an hour. So it's not faster or anything. Why do we want that one rather than the other one then? Why are we going to pay an extra, how much is this? An extra $20,000 for this compared to the other one. I thought at least this would go a bit faster than this one over here. I don't really know. I'm sure, yeah, I thought that it went a little bit faster, which would justify the higher price tag, but it doesn't. So all you're really doing is paying for the name. You're just, you're just paying for a brand name. It's like going and buying a pair of shoes. You go and buy a pair of trainers, and if they've got a, a, a brand name on them, like Nike or... Um, well, it used to be Reebok. I, I don't think Reeboks have been around for a very long time. But when I was in school, everybody wanted Reeboks. Now, we couldn't have Reeboks. Um, so you, you had the, the cheap Chinese knockoffs, which were... Um, I'm sure there was a, a Robok there at some point <laughs> that several kids used to go to school with. And... Um, they, they, they didn't cost you, like, uh, 50 quid for a pair of trainers. They, they, they cost you uh, 15 pounds for a pair of trainers instead of 50 pounds for a pair of trainers because you didn't have to pay for the name Reebok stamped down the side. And, yes, they didn't last quite as long, and if it rained, chances are you'd be left with only half a shoe. But the point is they still looked a bit like Reeboks, and that's all that really matters. And then, you, you know, you, you want, like... You weren't the coolest of the cool kids. I was never one of the coolest of the cool kids. I was, I was always, I was, um, I, if, if you had the Robux, then you, you were kind of like the, the next step down. You weren't the coolest of the cool kids, but at least you were making an effort. And then there was the ones underneath that. And then there was the ones right at the bottom that tended to just avoid any social situation, if at all possible, because cool was just never going to happen. That was me. I was I was in that set. That that was my group. That that I that was the that was the group that I hung out with. Um, we generally hung out in groups of one, and avoided all other unnecessary human contact because that was just much easier. You couldn't do things wrong if you were in a group of one. It simply wasn't possible. Okay, moving on from my wonderful wonderful school memories. I hated school. I really did. Wonderful, wonderful day it really was. Genuinely, it was one of the happiest days of my life when I left school. People told me that school, oh, you should make the most of school. Happiest days of your life. No, it was not. Definitely not. Life has only improved since I left school. Definitely improved since I left school. It was not a happy time. I hated school. I really hated school. And I also hate having to force my own kids to go through the same traumatic experience. Although they seem to do a lot better with school than I ever did. So I'm at least thankful for that. Um, but anyway, we're not here to talk about school. We're here to talk about farming today. So we're going to carry... We, we, we're still doing this a little bit. I'm wondering if I could just, like, start doing some of the planting now. We've got, I've got grass that needs to be planted. I, could, I suppose I could plant a little bit of it, couldn't I? I might be able to. There's a mob that I want to get. I want to bring it down here. And I'm not sure how it works. I don't know how... I, I don't know what we're supposed to do with it. But it does look pretty cool. And it also looks very cheap. So let's just have a look at that one a minute. Because I don't know where it is. I think it's under miscellaneous. It might not be. It might... Yes, it is. Toolbox. Can repair your machinery with a toolbox. Now, I like this idea. Right? I really do. I like the idea of being able to repair my machinery... The toolbox and not having to fork out for a really expensive workshop. Although we've already forked out for a really expensive workshop right here. So it kind of doesn't matter for us. Um, 
But, you know, we could sell that expensive workshop and we could just get the toolbox instead. Because I could, like, put that one... Well, you need somewhere to put... The, the toolbox has got to go into cover, hasn't it? What have we got over here? Right, we got... This This is our house over here. Can we actually go... Is is that, like, part of the house? I don't think that is. That's, that's like a workshop off to the side, surely? I don't know. And then you got that shed there. The workshop itself is not a great deal different to the actual toolbox and I don't have any shelter for it but this toolbox I think is something that I should be using in the hardcore series at least so you got right there you do have a toolbox that you can use and um so yeah maybe we won't be using that in this series because we've already got our tool we got our vehicle workshop right there at 28,000 uh oh but what about if we instead of using that right um decoration Farm garage is 20,000. Farm hut there, six grand. Yeah, that would be a whole lot cheaper. You got that one there. You, that's where you would store your, your toolbox. Okay, you, you persuaded me. I've listened to your reasoned arguments. I want you in the comment section today to talk about what tractor you think I should get for this series. I want to get a tractor for this series. Uh, sell. Only 13,000. I get half price refund on that. That's terrible. It's genuinely terrible. Um, what tractor do you think I should get? We need a bigger tractor. So we, we really, we're, we're at least looking at medium. We've got the case right there. And we've also got the John. No, we don't. What do we have? We got that. We got that fence right there. Um, and that one's upgraded. So, I mean, we could go for something slightly bigger. we got this John Deere over here um, with a bigger engine that takes us up to 300 horsepower, which is, you know, is, is a reasonable size tractor. But you know, maybe we ought to be thinking about larger tractors because up here we've got the 7R series. It starts at 269 horsepower. Engine setup that goes all the way up to 350 horsepower. Got the case there, 288. We've got the T7. Uh, the Terra CVT Series 9 there starts at 300 horsepower and goes all the way up to 330. Is that all? It's not much of an upgrade. Massey Ferguson at 300. The T8 there. I actually quite like the T8, and that will go all the way up to 435 horsepower, which is quite a boost, really. Um, the 900 Vario, the S series, the 8, I uh, got the, the Magnums up here. I know these are expensive tractors, but we want to be getting something to work towards, I think. I don't want to be working towards, at the moment, any tracked or articulated tractors, purely because of how slow they are. Um, so we're, we're disregarding tracked and articulated tractors at the moment. We're looking at these from the Fent 1000 and down, and maybe one of the mod ones as well. We've got the Fent 1000 here that's uh, slightly modified. Fent 900 Vario there. It's got some uh, differences in color. Uh, it's about it, really. It's just different color, isn't it? Um, Black Beauty instead of the, the normal greens. Um, but that one will go up to 400 horsepower there. So get into the comment section and tell me what tractor you think that I should at least be working towards for this series. Okay, if I've sold that, I've, I, I got distracted there for a minute. Um, I know, I know, it's nothing new there. Right, farm hut, six grand. So we're still saving money even if we're buying this farm hut look. Uh, so I'll bring that one in there. Object collides with another... Yeah, of course it does. Of course it does. We've now gone and bought something new. I need to rotate that round. Actually, if I press shift, it'll rotate it faster. And I think if you press C, yeah, it kind of does it like that. But it's not going to allow me to place it down here because it's colliding with all of this stuff. So I've, I've got objects in the way over there. Not that that... I don't... I don't think that's, like, a really bad thing, because I think it wouldn't hurt for us to put this somewhere else. Not that I want to put it there. And I can drop it there right in the middle of the yard, but that that might not be the best place to put it. All things considered, I'd like to put it over here somewhere. Like, to sort of do something like that, and... Ooh! Actually, we can! Okay. 
Right, well, in which case, we want to bring you back over here, and I'll put you to there, and then lower you down like that a little bit. Raise you up a bit there. Perfect. That's where I want you. Right, now, back, and, and we go into miscellaneous in here, and we go through and we get our toolbox. And that one, unfortunately, we can't actually put the toolbox in there. Right, let me have a look at this, because that's got, like, a thing on it, isn't it? Which way round has that got a... That's... Right, I think that circle there is telling us where we're allowed to place it. So that there, it just says it cannot be placed. Can I raise it up a bit? I could put it out on that corner... Like that. There. Perfect. Right. So we've now got that one down there. Let me go and have a look. This is our combine right here. And so we've got this now. We've got a placeable there. It's not something you can take around. So it's not like the, um, the, the field's trailer that we can use. But I like this. You know, we got, we've got our own workshop over here. We can't interact with the buildings in this. But we do have a workshop, so we can sort of drive on past it. We got near the horses, we drive past, and we can quickly run our repair jobs down here. Everything should be, everything should work fine. I see no reason why we shouldn't have any issues with this. Let's jump into the combine a second, because this could do with some repair works. Um, lift you up. I'll run you back over here, and I'll have a look, and I'll see how well this works. It's fairly even over here. It, it, I'm hoping that close will be fine. I can sort of bring it to there. Yes. I can repair that one. Yes. Now, the one thing that I don't like is if I press tab, um, I'm, like, I'm, I'm pressing different buttons. I can't cycle through in order to be able to pick up the next machine. So you still got to put them into the area one at a time. And I don't like... See, I can't... How am I supposed to get to the next one? Right, I want to be able to repair that bit on the front. Now, there is a mod that I've been linked. Uh, Jimmy J linked it to me, actually, in the... Yeah, repair that one there. Yes. Perfect. Um, there's a mod that shows you the repair condition of all of your machinery. Down in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, I... Don't, I didn't actually install it when he shared the link with me, so it's, it, it's there somewhere, and I will probably get it installed, because it does actually look really good. Um, you know what, we ought to just finish this off. As we're up here, we will just quickly finish this job here. We could always go and then hitch on the fertilizer spreader, throw a bit of fertilizer on his field, so that's the first code fertilizer all done. We're not having to worry about weeds in this series at the moment because I've turned the weeds off just for a little while. Uh, because, you know, we've done the weeding, we've seen what it's like, and we know that task has to be done. But we don't want to sort of spend all our time doing the same tasks over and over in this series. We've already got a series for doing that, and so that's why I kind of wanted to avoid doing it on this series as well. Um, this one, we can be a little bit more liberal with, um, realism, I think. I think that that would be quite acceptable. But we'll just quickly finish off this field here, and then I'll get the fertilizer spinner on. I can set that one going, and then at the end, once that the field has been done, or most of the field has been done, I can then take over again and go around and do the outside round. It should spread most of the field, just without needing any help. At least that's what I'm hoping. Lower down and get that bit there. I've got one more little bit to do up there, and then we can go back to our ploughing and finish getting that field ploughed, which will then allow us to go and finish uh, putting um, putting, what do you call, over there. Uh, uh, that put, gra put grass seed over there. Put grass seed. We want to put grass seed. Now, somebody told me that I don't actually need to lime a grass field. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but in order to test this, what we'll do is we won't put lime on it. 
and we will grow it. Now, I think what it does, it shows that there's lime missing until after you've mown it the first time. So we're going to we'll go over it with the mower and we'll see what we get. And then we'll see after we've done the mowing if it's still requiring lime. Because if it is requiring lime after, the, after we've done a cut, then we'll go and put lime on the field and we'll see what happens with it then. Um, so I'm, I'm really not sure what it requires at the moment. Now, is that... I don't know what that bit is there. Right, we've got that one little patch of weed there, but it's you know, weeds are switched off on the map, so it shouldn't actually need anything there at all. So I don't quite know why that bit is like it is. Wait and see. Right, I'm switching over to grass on there, so that one is ready to go. And I want to go... I'll park this one up over here, and then I will get the fertilizer spinner on. So I'm just going to drop you right there. And there we go. Spin round here. And now I need to find my... Oh, there's my fertilizer spinner. We've got the hook on that one. We know now that we can load a trailer of logs using this hook. We did that as the last episode in the Hardcore series. And it worked really well, actually. I was quite impressed with how well that did work in the end. So bring this one over. I'm just going to lift up the hook ever so slightly off the top. But I don't think we're going to need to worry about the hook at all today. I think I can just bring that one up to there like that. Back you up a little bit and just press H and you'll go. There we go. Yeah, it's overlapping a little bit on this side. That's fine. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Right, we'll leave that one go. Carry on with this one now. We've got a little bit more plowing to do. We've done most of it. We've just sort of... Well, I say we've done most of it. We have, actually. It's amazing. You do four or five rounds around the outside, and it really is most of the field done. So we'll carry on with this a little bit. Um, yeah, so the next tractor we want, I would like to use that class baler just because I've never used a 5300. I think it would be pretty awesome to be able to use one of those, even if it is just in game and not in real life. I don't mind that bit. I, I can cope with that. Um, and run up and down the field a bit with it. We've got plans to use up the rest of the corn for the chickens and then move over and get started. Up. It's a bit rough there, isn't it? It's a bit rough on that entrance way. Let me stop a second and we'll go back to the landscaping again. I don't want to do this too much. I definitely don't want to do too much landscaping because it does get expensive. But we've got a bit right here. Oops. Actually, I mean, I pressed the wrong button there. You may, you, you may not have noticed. Um, yeah, we bring that down... There, ease that down through. And now I've undone all of that ploughing work that I'd done previously. It's not got to go over it again, but... It's going to level our field out a little bit, so that's, that's the main thing. Okay, let me lift you up. We'll go and just quickly redo this little bit. Shouldn't take us very long. It's only a little small piece. He says, crossing his fingers and hoping... And that back to there. Right, that seems to be working fairly well, and it's a lot more even now. So we shouldn't have any problems with the mowers uh, getting sort of bounced around a bit. That's my main concern on it, is the mowers being bounced around. We'll have the money very soon to be able to go and buy our next chickens. Once we've done this ploughing, we've got the planting done. We've got the fertilising being done right now as we speak. The planting will start very soon, as soon as we've got this field done here, which means that the grass will then be done and this field will be ready to go. I'm not going to do the mowing just yet. I'm going to let all of the grass catch up. Uh, we've, we've gone and bought a load of bales and stuff down there. So we can then go back to just fast-forwarding time a little bit. We want the chickens, the, the 100 chickens, we want them to use up the grain that they've got. Uh, mostly, that's, that's kind of what we're after them doing. Plus fill up the last pallet that's over there. And then once that's done, or they've at least used up some of that grain, because you can't take the grain out of the pens. 
You can sell the pens, but then you've got wasted grain. And we've got a ton and a half of grain in for them, at least. Let's have a look. I can't remember how much we have got in there. So we've got this over here. We've got nearly three tons of grain in for them. I'd like to use up a little bit. Now, it says six, uh, I think it's six days worth it puts in there. These are doing absolutely wonderfully. Get loads in there. The sheep are doing well. 41 sheep. And then, we've obviously, we've got all of our horses up here. These are on 44%. And then we've got several horses now on 75%. So they're soon going to be ready to be sold. Once those horses are ready to be sold, we see the first thing we do is we buy more horses back and we get them named. But then the next thing that we do after we've bought the horses back is we expand. And I want to use that money. I want to sell the chicken pen and I want to hopefully get another horse pen in its place. That's the plan at least. Whether this plan is going to work and be successful, I have absolutely no idea. But... We can hope and we can pray that it will work because then I'll be able to get 16 horses at one time on this map. I, maybe I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm thinking a block of 16 horses would probably be better. I was saying that I didn't really want to do that. And I was thinking, you know, we, we would sort of spread out the horses a bit. But I'm actually, the more I think about it, a block of, you know, just a big chunk of horses all at once. I go rename them all and then... Um, all the names that are used are then there for several episodes while we wait for those horses to reach their 100%. And then I move on a little bit further through the Great Book of Names. Um, if you want to find out more about the Great Book of Names and how to get in there, then there's a link to my website down in the description below. There is also a link to the Discord in the description below. You can find out details on the Discord as well. Um, there's lots of other cool stuff that happens on the Discord, like you can find out what plans are for each week for... Ooh. Right, well, that, that, that right there is not supposed to happen. We've got... Oh! I think we missed a tree stump there. I think we missed one. Go over to you. And I'm going to try and do it with this tree stump. I know this tractor's a little bit slower than the others. Oops. Yeah, we, we got that X piece there. We got the X bar right there. We mustn't forget that one. We we'll run up here, right the way across our field. And we'll bring this bad boy up to here like this. Start you up. And remove this tree stump, I hope. In theory. Should all work perfectly. There we go, look. Okay, let's, let's get through that nice and quick, that is. Oh, that was that was actually quite impressive. It was quite impressive the speed that it got through that. I was very impressed with that. Let's just run you down here. I'm just going to park this one over here because we may be glad of that one again. There we go. And we will also go over here like that. And once again, it's left that tiny little strip where I think it's to, just to do with where the hill is. Um. And, and the way the hill works out. So we've got a little bit right there. And then we've got a little bit there that's not uncovering for some reason. Looks like... I, I See, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that little bit. You got just It's just that tiny bit right there. There's another bit over there that's got a bit of weed on it as well. A um, couple of little tiny patches on the field that seem to have got some issues. Uh, I'm not too worried about them. And I'll come up to here like this. And then we can swing around like that, and we can take out this. We've, we've done all of that side. That worked out all right. We'll just trundle our way along here. I suspect that he's turned a little bit sooner on the other end of the field because of the um, the cliffs in the way. I can't do that in a single pass, so I'll just keep back like this. Yeah. The, the way the field is and the cliffs in the way, it's not done all of that. He's done most of it, mind. Has done most of it, which is pretty good. We get to there like that and then stop a minute and we'll back up. We're whizzing back through here. And we can That way we can get this uh, last little bit up here. And then we've got this field fully planted, fully... Uh, well, not fully fertilised. It's It's been... We've had the lime on this field. We've got one layer of fertiliser. We'll have one more to do after we've had a growth stage. And we've also got the... Um, it's all planted. I said that, didn't I? 
planted lime. We don't need to worry about the weeds. One fertilizer. We've just got one pass of fertilizer to put on this field. That's all we've got left to do on this one, which is going to be fairly straightforward to deal with. Bring you down here. We've also not even used a ton of fertilizer to do this field, which means that when it is time to do it again, we shouldn't have any issues with it. So I'll bring you down to there. I'm just going to stop you right there. Like that. I'm going to leave that on there. And I go back to this one. Why is it in the ground? Did I leave it like that? Did I? We will realistically turn a really sharp corner with our plow there. I seen a video the other day. Somebody linked it onto the Discord, actually, um, of speed plowing. Now, I've talked about speed plowing before. I find it absolutely hilarious watching speed plowing. It's brilliant. I thoroughly recommend you go and watch that video. It's, it's brilliant. If, you, if you're not on the Discord and you don't want to join, fair enough. Um, go and just Google or um, you'd quit, do a quick YouTube search for speed plowing competition. It's absolutely brilliant. Genuinely, genuinely awesome stuff to watch. It really is. It's absolutely fantastic. I don't think I will ever get bored of watching speed plowing competitions. They are hilarious. The, the, the speed that they do it. And it is. It's, it's proper speed. Like, that, they really are insane with how fast they're doing this i'm thinking in order to speed things up a little bit here so that we can have things going a little bit faster if we quickly jump over to you like that and I lower that one down there we'll just leave this one out here because we're going to be using it again fairly soon anyway i very quickly run over to this one and i hook on this one right here not going to worry about doing an outside round or anything like that. I'm just going to hook you on there and I'm going to unfold you. I will have to move that lorry and trailer right there. We'll come whizzing up through here. And I will stop right there. Back a bit, back a bit. And we will go H there. So we're now planting grass on this one. Right out to the very edge on there. And then the rest of it, he should just go on up through and do that just fine. So I ignore, ignore that one for a second. I want to go to you. And we're going to move you down to the lower side of the silo so that we're not in the way. Those bales, I don't know if the placed bales are going to be in his way or not. Genuinely no idea about that. They might be, they might not be. I, I really don't know. But we'll move this one down here so he's out of the way. There. Just stop that one there. And we're back up here. Yeah, you're fine at the moment. There's a couple trees there, which means that the bit in the middle there is not going to be done very evenly. But down this side, it'll be fine. I don't think we've got anything to worry about. It's just going to plant absolutely everything all the way down through. Excellent. Right. So there is another task done. Getting our grass planted with our uh, dirty old fence with the, the front loader on. I've spent so much time working in fields with a tractor with a front loader out the front like this. It's just kind of bog standard to me. I mean, I know that some of you don't see this very often. Um, but to me, this kind of, like, it's, it's a very familiar sight. It's something that I've done myself an awful lot of. And do you remember me saying that there was a Deutz tractor that um, I used to drive that was an air-cooled engine and not a water-cooled engine? Um, so it had like a, a really low sloping bonnet. You didn't have the water in it and it made a difference to the amount of space that the engine took up. Um, and I really didn't like it. That was a loader tractor as well. So it had the loader stuck out the front just like that tractor has right there. Um, basically, your loader was your, your front weight. You didn't have front weight. You just had that loader on there. As it happens, as it happens, there. It's that. No, it's not. It's that one. There. Look. See. Look at that thing. There, that, there's what a tractor looks like. That's what. That's what a tractor looks like. Okay. Radiator on the front. Water system in there. That's that's a tractor. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's that. It is a tractor. This. That's not a tractor. Thing looks ridiculous. It looks absolutely ridiculous. And this was an air-cooled system. So um, that the engine was air-cooled. The engine wasn't water-cooled. It didn't have a water-filled radiator in it at all. 
At least as far as I know. I may have this wrong, but it's, I, I believe that's how they were able to get this slope bonnet. I mean, yes, admittedly, the slope bonnet like that did make it a lot easier for using as a loaded tractor because you had improved visibility from inside the cab, which was, was great and all, but um, I still hated this tractor. And it is this track. It is this tractor. This one. Look, see, the same gears and everything. I hated this tractor. It's a horrible tractor. It really is. Unfortunately for me, this tractor right here, um, you've got front hydraulics that you can put on it if you want to. There, you've got various front weights that you can put on it. You've got standard um, engine setup. We can go up to 143,000. Uh, but the, um, the the basic engine on here and the non-front hydraulics, so everything standard, this tractor is only 18,000. So unfortunately for me, it's very likely that I'm going to have to be driving that tractor very, very soon. And yes, you all know where I'm going to be driving it, not on this series. Um, and I, I don't like this fact. I wish they'd made another tractor that was about the size of tractor we need and, you know, something that uh, I, I could do things with. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and be in my price range. But um, it's unfortunate. So I'm going to be reliving some of the one of the worst tractors I ever had the misfortune of having to drive for any length of time. And I'm having to do it on on the super hardcore series, which means it's not a tractor I'm going to be able to get rid of anytime soon. Have you ever seen? I don't I don't know if what and uh, I don't know what the rating is on it, but it's a Man in the Iron Mask. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio and. Basically, um, at one point, he has the iron mask and he puts it on the other guy. I'm not going to say any more about it because I don't want to do any spoilers if you haven't seen the film. But um, he puts the iron mask is put back on this person and he screams at him, you will wear it until you love it. And I can't help but get the feeling that someone out there has created that tractor mod especially for me and they are now yelling at the screen you will use it until you love it yeah thanks for that really appreciate it honestly dude I, uh, you know I, I, I really appreciate the sentiment there I really don't I, I really really don't why couldn't you have made another one <laughs> anyway we, we well I was about to say we've done all our plowing we haven't we've still got a little bit up there that we'll have to finish in our next episode um but then we will have finished all our ploughing. We've got most of the planting done now. We've got the... Uh, all of that planting is done over there. So we've got a, a brand new field of grain. What did I plant? Oh, I don't even remember what I planted. Uh, what did I plant? I, pl I, I planted wheat. We've got another field of wheat ready for our chickens. We've got eggs being produced frantically by our chickens. They're laying as fast as the... Um, the, the, the girlies are laying as fast as they can. And we've got sheep producing loads of wool down there. One thing I'm really looking forward to finding out with the sheep is once they reach maximum capacity, what do we get for selling the adult sheep? Or, you know, technically it'd be selling the lambs. And this is one thing. Wool, certainly in the UK, is a byproduct of producing sheep. You know, it used to be many years ago that wool was one of the primary products for keeping sheep. It was one of the main reasons for keeping sheep was the wool. The wool was the luxury item. And the meat from the sheep was not a vast consideration. So, you know, sheep gave birth to singles, right? They, they, they gave birth to one lamb apiece. And you maintained your flock. Nowadays, it's all about producing lamb. You know, sheep are for meat. They're a meat item. Wool is a very minor thing. A lot of sheep producers, certainly over the last 10 years, uh, well, I say 20 years, I should say, um, the money that you got back for shearing a sheep just about covered the cost of removing the wool from the sheep, right? So you broke even on wool if you were lucky, and that was it. You didn't make money on it. Some people might make money on it, uh, I don't know if that has changed in the last uh, five to ten years, because I haven't had anything to do with it in the last five to ten years. But I don't think it has. It's still very much a, you hope to cover your own costs of having the wool taken off the sheep, and then that's it. You're not going to get anything else for it. Um, it's just a job that's got to be done in order to make the sheep more comfortable. And the reason you keep sheep is meat production, and that's where your money comes from. So... 
these days, um, sheep breeds. They're bred specifically for their ability to produce twins. And most sheep farmers, at least lowland sheep farmers, the ones that have got, you know, lots of good ground and they can keep big fat sheep like Suffolk's, um, their main aim is to get as close to a 200% lambing rate as they possibly can. So a twin from every sheep. Um, I know several hill farmers, and I've worked for several hill farmers, who they aim for a 100% lambing rate. Um, if they go too far over 100%, I know a farmer who one year he had 140% lambing rate. And I said to him, well, that's, that's good, isn't it? He said it's the worst lambing rate he's ever had. He's normally closer to 100%, but they all started producing twins this year, and it was terrible. Um, he had nearly 140% lambing rate. Um, because they're typically a smaller lamb, and they don't do quite as well. And the breed of sheep that he has produces typically less milk. Um, and so the, the, the bigger breeds of sheep, they produce enough milk for two lambs and you can produce two really good lambs. Whereas a lot of the older breeds, they, they'll, two uh, twins, you, you struggle to get um, really good lambs out of twins. And so, yeah, he, he was not happy that he had 140% lambing rate and he would have preferred much closer to 100%. Lower, you, you don't want lower than 100%. You definitely don't want lower. There's something's gone wrong there. Something's gone horribly wrong. Um, so anywhere from 100 to 110%, that's what you're looking for. Because there's one lamb per sheep. That's perfect. That's what, that's what you want. One lamb per sheep. If you can keep it at one lamb per sheep, you've done well. And so that's most of the lambing that I've been involved with is actually being that kind of lambing. So whereas there's one lamb per sheep. Um and that's what it would have been years ago and you maintain your flock with that and you've got meat producing as well but many years ago wool used to be like the big thing and so that's, that's what the game has and wool is like the big thing whereas producing lamb doesn't seem to be and i'm really looking forward to finding out what is happening with um the sheep once we get you know so i'd like to expand on our sheep a little bit quite a lot of you have said yes you agree um we should postpone doing the cattle i mean I, was, I know some of you do want me to do the milking on this map but now a lot more of you are saying yeah good idea don't worry about doing the um milk and the cows on this map do chickens and sheep and obviously the horses and worry about doing the um milk production in that on the next map we'll go arable chickens and sheep on this one and then we'll do milk production on the next map um so i'm really looking forward to finding out once we get more sheep going uh, how viable it is getting the, the larger pens of sheep and um, getting them full of sheep and then selling off 10%. Once, they, once the pen reaches maximum capacity, sell 10% of the sheep. See how much we get and, and see how much this sort of carry on with. Why are you stopping? Serious? Oh, I know why he's stopping. He's, he's gotten hung up. Right, well, we'll have to finish this uh, this side um, in our next episode anyway. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. Uh, oh. If I lift that up. There. It's because of that bit. We, we managed to raise that bit up, but we can't sink it back down because we don't own the bit of land at the top. So it... Allowed us to modify it a little bit, but not completely. Which is not ideal, is it? Uh, we'll carry on with this next time as well. Uh, so until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.